um, into it, which is, I think, an interesting segue into another article mm -hmm. that um, I thought was really, really interesting. It's actually, this is non nothing production at this point. It came out of um, a group of research from a startup, so it is not academic research, but a startup called Together AI. And they are introducing in this paper two concepts um, that I thought were interesting. One is this idea of long inference models, and the other is what they're calling a mixture of agents. So we've talked in the past about mixture of experts, um, which is people like Databricks and Snowflake and others are taking this approach. But mixture of agents, at least if I'm understanding this right, um, and I'm curious your take because you have a more technical understanding of some of this stuff. But if I'm understanding this right, is basically taking these various, so when we talk about agentic AI, generally what we talk about is sort of um, what Emergence was doing, right? This orchestrator model where you you put a, put in a request and this request, this requester or orchestrator tries to decide what agent to go hand that off to, to get done, right? And it's sort of this linear progression, this one shot thing. And this idea of long inference models and mixture of agents of I'm understanding is effectively an iteration process where instead of simply um, taking that one shot approach, it's effectively asking multiple agents the same question, taking their responses and using that as a foundation of iteration. And I'd looked at this sort of like crowdsourcing, um, you know, uh, or, you know, knowledge sourcing with a bunch of AI agents. And I thought, well, that's a really interesting approach. What was really interesting because I forgot what it was a few weeks ago, there was somebody else that had some similar sort of research mm -hmm. and it was incredibly expensive. And it was all about the security. It was a company, that's what it was, that was going to market. It was all about like validating the data. Well, this approach, while it appears to be more expensive, they're claiming it may actually in fact be cheaper because of the speed at which it's able to do it. So it was really fascinating to me. It made my head explode a little bit more than I could completely grasp, but it was it was really fascinating. So I'm curious what your take and read on all of it was. Yeah, I thought it was really interesting because it 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 is uh, paradoxically uh, both more complicated and yet potentially cheaper <laughs> uh, by being able to figure out the right use cases for each uh, agent that you might be interested in using at the end of the day. So I found that combination of that and then being able to have uh, better uh, call it attention uh, by being able to understand uh, conversations over a uh, longer, greater scope uh, is very promising uh, for AI. And just showing that a lot of the rules that we're thinking about for AI right now, such as a specific token limit uh, or specific word limit associated with inputs or outputs, uh, specific uh, speed of uh, it, of response, as well as the accuracy of what you see from a factual or data-driven perspective. All, all this stuff is still a little bit up in the air. Um, we, we talked a few weeks ago as well about a potential approach to uh, change the actual mathematics uh, behind an LLM from a more matrix-based approach to a more uh, basic arithmetic or arithmetic approach. So when you put all these things together, you're starting to see a future uh, where we, we can already see it now. There will be several or even many uh, agents, and we're going to have some sort of orchestration and intelligence to figure out which agent is the right one to work with us at any given point. And honestly, what we have now is not what this is going to be looking like in three to five years. Just, I can't emphasize that enough. Um, like 2027 version of AI is not going to look like what we are doing right now in, in the enterprise, period. Not, not even close. And I think what it is what's challenging. And so there are two big challenges that I saw around all this. To your point, this raised up yet again. I mean, we've probably done this four or five times in the 20 weeks that we've been doing this where there's been something else. We go, ah, this this is a signal that there could be some change coming about how we look at this. Um, there, we have that high rate of change, and yet we all know the enterprise does, doesn't change that fast. And so it's, I think we have a bit of a potential for a whack-a-mole issue that by the enterprise, by the time the enterprise gets to deploying something, that the technology has changed so dramatically. So I think that this is really going to introduce a real significant challenge for CIOs and other enterprise IT leaders to figure out how to build this what I'll call it the adaptability capability, the, the ability to move quickly without getting so invested in something that you can't change it because it's going to be changing so fast and you want to be able to seize that opportunity 
um, and not get yourself locked in. And I think that's gonna become increasingly difficult with this, um, particularly if we see some major change. The other thing.